Hello everyone and welcome to episode 22 of the chess.com rapid rating climb. My name is Alex and in this series we play rapid games on chess.com. I try and give as deep explanations during the game and in the post game analysis as I can for your education. And I'm rated classical over the board between 1950 and 2000. So my online rapid rating ought to be at least 2000 in my opinion, which is what this series is about. And in this game, we get a Vienna against an Iranian guy. I believe that's the Iranian flag. There we go. I don't think I've missed yet. I don't think I've missed a flag yet. Maybe one, but no, I've got, I've got the Iranian flag. I know geopolitics. And we have Knight F6. So you guys know what's coming up. We have the Vienna Gambit. We literally played the Vienna Gambit in the last episode of the rating climb because I want to try and show my actual opening repertoire as a 2000 ELO player because, you know, the Vienna Gambit might not necessarily be considered a particularly high level opening. Around my rating, people more so tend to play openings like the Roy Lopez or the Italian game or, well, yeah, after E4, that tends to be what is played, uh, just the Roy Lopez or the Italian. But I find that even though the Vienna might not objectively be the best way for white to go, I know the theory incredibly well because I've played so many games in it. And that's my philosophy with openings in general, is to play slightly subpar openings and catch my opponents off guard with tricky lines. So f4 is played by me. My opponent responds with d6, so if we take, he takes back. And black has a far better position if you take, because both his bishops are open, my king side is kind of weak, and he has a massive grip over the d4 square once his queen opens up, right? So we're not going to do that. We're going to play knight f3 and put even more pressure on his center pawn, because we would like him to take, and it turns into kind of a better version of a king's gambit, is the idea. Okay, bishop g4. Now, bishop c4 is on my radar now, because I want to set up sacrifices on f7, so I can like move the knight with check and pick up the bishop, right? So, what I do have to check, however, is bishop c4, knight e4, knight e4, d5, forking my bishop and my knight. However, if I then go bishop b3 and he takes my knight... I think I can take on f7, and if he takes, then knight to e5 check picks up the bishop, but he doesn't have to take the bishop. If he instead plays king to e7, then my bishop is hanging and my knight is hanging, and my knight is pinned so it can't move. I'm going to just note this variation down quickly to go over in the post-game analysis. Already on move 5 we have um, big complications. So bishop c4, knight takes e4. I don't think that works out for me. Just trying to check if I've missed anything. I mean we could do like bishop c4, knight e4, knight e4, d5, bishop e2, d takes e4, knight takes, e5, takes, takes though. And there I think we actually go up a pawn. Yeah, I think we go up a pawn there. So bishop c4. Bishop c4. So knight takes e4. Bishop b... Oh wait, no. Knight takes e4. d5. Bishop b3. I don't think bishop b3 works because, like I said before, once he takes the knight, if we take and he takes back, then we have this fork and we win the bishop because our knight can move with check and it also attacks the bishop alongside our queen. But he doesn't have to take our bishop. He can just play a move like king e7. So our opponent doesn't go into those complications and I think they fail because of bishop e2. We will check that after the game though important to try and understand these tactical complications in openings because this is like a classic center fork trick 
and trying to go for d5. And you can play it from the white side in some openings as well. It's very prevalent in the four knights game, the center fork, which I will show you in the analysis. I'm very professional with my notepad now. It's, uh, the channel's leveling up. And uh, here we can just keep things nice and simple with d3. Our opponent could play knight a5 going after our bishop. Is that annoying? Maybe. But I also don't want to waste a move playing a3. Because then I think knight takes might work. So let's go d3 instead. And if he goes knight to a5, attacking the bishop, we could get... Yeah, no, he goes for this line. Which is kind of expected. Because he just wants to put a ton of pressure on the knight on f3. Now there is a trap here. After takes, if he takes back, then we have this whole bishop takes, king takes, knight here line. But it's not so simple. Because after knight to e4, king g8, take the bishop, knight takes, queen takes. There is knight takes c2 with check. Right? I believe I've actually played this exact line in a classical game before. And I think that game ended in a draw. I did have a win at some point, but it was like impossible to see. It was basically a draw. So I think castling might be the way to go here. I believe the computer really likes h3 in these positions, but I want to try and set up this trick. We could go bishop to e3 and try and force him to do this and then castle queenside though and use the open g file. So that's an option. That might be quite a good option. Um, see, the problem is if we castle kingside, I want to. I want the king on h1 because after takes takes bishop h3, I want to put the uh, rook on g1. The problem is if we castle takes takes bishop h3, my king is on g1, so I'll have to play that rook e1 or rook f2. Probably rook e1, I think, is better. And I don't like that position, because then we have to spend another move moving our king and then the rook. So, we're not going to do that. We're not, I'm, I I'm think I'm just going to go for bishop to e3. Trying to just put some pressure on and force black to make a decision. I would like to see knight takes f3, pawn takes f3, bishop to h3, and queen d2 or queen e2 preparing queenside castle. That's my plan. And we have a lot of pressure on his e5 pawn still. So, you know, worth bearing in mind. If he doesn't respond, we could take. A move that he might play is c5. So after takes, he might want to take back with the c pawn. But even there, I think I quite like the position. Also after c5, we could take on e5 because if he takes back the difference with the previous variation is we can take the knight first although he has queen takes which covers knight to e5 check this is very interesting and if we try and mix the move order up like c5 takes 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 our knight's hanging which is the problem now what we could do is like c5 takes takes and just put our knight on d5 and say we've got a lot of positional advantage because his bishop is absolutely horrible and knights are better suited for this position than bishops if we get this trade in the center which is probably true we can probably argue that and try and work some kind of advantage from that but it's not it's not like particularly concrete if you know what I mean. Like, it's not an obvious advantage. Although we do dominate the center a fair bit in that line. But we're also not committing to a whole lot with the move bishop to e3. We're just developing. We're just attacking a piece. We don't have to take it. Our minor pieces are developed quite nicely. Our pawn structure is very solid. He can't take on f4 because his knight hangs. And even if he trades here first or something and he ends up taking, we can just take back with the bishop. And we have a very strong pawn-like triangle in the center. 
and the opening G file should favour us with like moves like Rook G1 to get our Rook into the game and Castle Queen side. Opponent's taking a long thing here, which is probably smart because it's kind of a critical position. He kind of has to decide if he's going to take me or if he's going to support his knight. I mean, he can't. Maybe he can just play bishop e7? Can he? But then takes, 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 takes. Our knight hangs at the end of it, so we don't have the bishop f7 trick. Although if bishop e7 takes, takes, check, there, check, there, takes, 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 knight c2, king d2, knight a1. Is this, is this good? Queen to e6, king to f8. I'm not sure. Okay, he decides to take. That was an interesting line, though. We will get into some of it in the game analysis. On, um, so like, move 7 if he plays bishop e7. Whether we can get an advantage from that or not. But okay, we don't get that. He trades the knight, opens the g-file for us, and goes bishop h5. The thing is, this bishop can get really stranded in these types of structures because it's kind of blocked off from entering back into the game, especially if we play f5 at some point. We could play f5 immediately. Do we want to allow him to take us? I don't know. We could go queen e2 preparing queenside castle. I don't want to take because I don't want to open the d-file for him. If he takes us... I think that's good for us. But f5 also makes a lot of sense. Just to lock the center shut. And then we have the pawn breaks of d4 and f4 whenever we want to. We can prepare our position and then strike in the center. Whereas now he has the option to take us. As long as we can stop him from ever playing d5. The problem is, if we go f5, then he could try and play like c6, d5. Whereas if we leave this pawn on f4, this won't be possible. Because if he goes c6, we could just take on e5 and force his d-pawn to take back. So I like queen to e2. Just keep it an eye on f3. Maybe the queen will rotate to the king side, depending on what black does. We can now castle queen side. We can put a, put a rook on g1. We could maybe even try and double up rooks with something like this. And yeah, there is a good chance he goes queen side though. However, this looks scary. B6. And then that would that would blunder mate. So he can't actually castle. I'm tempted to play rook g1 to stop him from developing his bishop. Which we're going to do. He might be trying to play queen to h3. Yeah, can't we just take this though? Because this gets checkmated. I think he might have missed that. Just bishop takes a7. I mean, his plan might be here, here. So what if we just take him first? F takes e5, d takes e5, bishop a7. Bishop b4. Then g7 hangs. Let's do it. I don't like opening the center up, but I also don't see what black's going to do down the d-file. He, he has no play, because d4 is defended. D5 is incredibly well defended, and D3 is certainly not a weakness. There's no vulnerability of my king, 
This bishop can always drop back to f2 if we really need it to. But I don't think we need to. Again, b6 blunders mate, which might be what he missed. He might have been intending to trap my bishop with like b6 king to b7, which is a classic like bishop trap, which is what Bobby Fischer blundered in, I believe, game two of his World Championship match with Spassky in 1972. So it's, it's, it's a classic idea, but it doesn't work every single time. Like, it only works if we can't access the light squares, which is exactly what we can do. So we just up a pretty clean pawn here. We have a ton of pressure on his position. We also dominate the d5 square. Like, if his knight ever moves, we're sticking a knight on d5. Or we could just put a knight on d5 to try and trade if we want to. Once we castle queenside, our king is in no danger. He has a bit of pressure on f3, sure. But it's defended, and I don't see how he adds another attacker. Again, queen h3 is an idea, but rook g3 should just kick it out. Our queen defends h2, our rook defends f3 and attacks the queen. f1 is covered, g2 is covered, the queen is just forced straight back out. Or maybe h4, but yeah. Okay, so he goes bishop b4, which is what I calculated. Which is this. I don't really care if he doubles our pawns, I don't think. We could queenside castle. There, there. This will come with an attack on our bishop, though. So we could play bishop to b3 to stop queen a4. But bishop b3, then b6. Ah, so we can't do that. Can't do that. So, we could drop our bishop back. Takes, takes. Queen a4, bishop b3, we're well defended. Queen a3. Bishop c1. That looks good. And we are up a clean pawn. We could take on g7. But I don't think we need a second pawn, to be honest. Because our position looks very, very dominant. We could play queen d2, but then that just hangs f3. We have no real good way of defending the knight. So let's just castle. Take, take. Queen a4 attacks the bishop, but everything should be well defended. Maybe we can even go bishop here. Bishop c5 means that queen a3 check isn't a move. I just realized I played the wrong move order. I wanted to go bishop, bring, bring my bishop back first before I castled. I just blundered. Not, I didn't blunder. I just played, didn't play the move I was intending, which is very common when you're calculating and you just mix moves up. It should be free though. If he gives this check, he can win c3, which I don't want to allow. But if bishop c5, b6. Bishop b3 comes with an attack on the queen. And then the bishop can move. Because queen to a3 won't come with an attack on the pawn. Because our bishop on b3 will be blocking it. So this is a tempting move. I don't think we're missing anything. If queen a5 attacking the bishop and the pawn. Then bishop b5. Looks like it works quite well. Kick the queen out. Our opponent's creating practical chances for himself, though, so I've got to give him some credit. He's um, he's doing the right things to try and fight back here. But I think one of the big problems is once we consolidate our position, this is going to hang. So this is the move I want to play. Because if I bring my bishop back, then queen a3 and c3 will fall. So bishop b3 looks nice. And bishop b3, queen a5, bishop b4. Let's 
do it. I don't think I'm blundering anything. What we might have to watch out for is uh, queen a5, bishop b4, move like queen a7, trying to play c5, trap our bishop. So he plays it immediately. Okay. It's not a bad idea because this, this, and our bishop is trapped. So bishop here, I don't think this is scary because we're going to bring our bishop back to c1. So bishop e3 looks pretty nice. Bishop e7 is a move, yes, but after rook d7, I don't really want to take this knight because then g7 is no longer a weakness. And I want g7 to stay on the board as a weakness. If we can force this bishop to go to g6 to have to defend the pawn, then that's a great win because it's looking at nothing, which frees our queen up. So I want to play bishop to e3. Again, I don't think I'm blundering anything here. We've got five minutes left on the clock. And yeah, we force bishop g6 to defend g7, which is exactly what we want. Exactly what we want. I want to go king to b2 to stop queen a3 forever. So this is never a move now. And he has no dark squared bishop to support the queen. c5. If you play c4, we just take it. That's that's fine. I'm tempted to play f4 to try and break the center open to access his king. But if we go f4, then bishop to h5 is a skewer. So we don't want to allow that. We could play queen to f2, setting up a battery. To try and stop his pawns from ever moving and then preparing f4 because our queen is no longer able to be skewered. The queen also attacks f4 from this square. That looks pretty nice to me. Again, just lining this up. There isn't anything immediate, and even if nothing comes of it, we're going to hinder his movement on the queen side by doing this. In the far future, there may even be sacrifices on c5 with some kind of tactic and like picking e5 up or something like that like even here if the queen wasn't defending this might be an idea to attack the rook i don't really understand what that does though in all honesty it's a strange move i don't really see how it even helps an attack because he can't play b5 to play rook a6 because we just take and our bishop defends a2 anyway maybe he's just trying to double up on the d file if um, f4, knight g4 isn't a move because our rook defends that square. If, you go, if we go f4, bishop to h5, rook f1, then knight here. Then well, maybe we go rook to e1 to defend the bishop and then if knight g4, queen here. And if he takes that can just take back we defend f4 we attack the bishop g7's under attack that looks pretty good to me so let's go with f4 again i'm expecting this so that the bishop attacks the rook and gets ready to defend the g4 square for the knight to go into but through calculation i believe that that favors us even though it looks kind of scary okay he doesn't do that he just takes that doesn't look great though. We could take with the bishop or the queen. I think I want to take with the bishop though. Looks more natural. Let's take. We can consider playing the move c4 to lock down the queen side, but I don't want to lock my bishop out with the game forever. Okay. If we could take the bishop and he had to take back with the pawn, then we would go bishop to e6. But after rook takes g6, he can take with this pawn. So that doesn't work. Again, you need to keep an eye out for these tactics, though. e5 is on the cards, but knight d5, and I don't want to take with my light squared bishop. Bishop to e5 is also kind of nice. 
is threatening to take the knight. And where's the knight actually going to move to? If knight to h5, that looks really ugly. The knight is out of the game. Let's do it. Again, just trying not to blunder anything. Because our king is kind of vulnerable. We could try and play a4 to stop b5 and make sure a3 is no longer under threat. Okay, we can just trade. That's an interesting move from him. Didn't expect that. I guess his point is that our rooks aren't really in the game. But two pawns off, this should be easy to convert. Yeah, let's go for it. There's no way that he can pull anything from this game. As long as I don't do anything stupid. It is difficult to find a breakthrough for us though, but his king is so exposed. We can maybe even put a bishop on d5 at some point. As long as we can keep our king well defended. The, the only problem is the structure on the queen side. Leaves our king a bit exposed, but... Okay, queen under attack. I like the move queen to e5. Because it's central and it can't really be attacked. But I also want to play e5 probably. To try and go e6. So instead queen f4 looks nice. Queen f4, b5, e5, rook a6. Maybe that's the idea. I don't think I should be scared of it though. With the rook in front of the queen, that's not really scary. Because what? The rook's going to go to a3? Like, it's not doing anything there. If this rook could magically transport to a8, then maybe. But even then, you can go to a3, but when I go back, a2 is defended. And this bishop is out of the game because of this pawn structure. That's part of the reason I wanted it to go to g6, because I thought it would be completely forced out of the game there and just stuck behind a wall of pawns. So, okay, let's see how black continues. He's got a lot more time than me, partially because I've spent so long explaining stuff. Even with a minute 30, I think this should be a fairly easy conversion. Fairly easy. We could try and harass this bishop who moves like f4, h5 at some point. f7 is weak. If we can win f7, it's game over. Part of the reason I want to go e5 is to go e6 to try and break apart the king side for my opponent and give my rook some open lines to get into. So is that. I think queen f4 is a good move. He's my queen in the center. Just pressures some potentially weak squares. And when we play e5, we could maybe swing the queen over to the queen side if necessary. But its king is very, very weak. It's just hard to actually exploit it. But again, if we can get e6 in, we might be able to use the light squares against it. Again, our opponent's taking a long think. Not sure. I I mean, I'm expecting b5. But b5, I actually quite like rook g5 targeting these weak pawns. Although, rook g, sorry. b5, rook g5, c4. We can't take with the pawn. 
because our rook hangs on d1. That's interesting. So maybe b5 does threaten the move c4. How can we respond? Bishop d5 kind of allows c4 anyway. After takes, takes, our king is horribly, horribly placed. So b5 looks like the key move. We go to e5 then. Maybe we should have gone there in the first place. c4. Yeah, b5 is the move. It's a very interesting plan from my opponent. Could go c4 ourselves. Takes, takes, rook b6, bishop back to b3. Not sure on that. e5 attacks the rook, so c4 we just take his rook. So e5, rook a6. Our queen now defends c4. Yeah, we're going to play that. That looks pretty good to me. B4 isn't a concern. We could play C4 or we could just take it. So that looks pretty good. And, okay. I mean, F7 is fairly well attacked as well. But, of course, we need to try and ensure the safety of our king first. That is a very odd move. I guess his point is that the threat of c4 is renewed, but what if we go e6? e6 takes takes. We're going to win his rook. But maybe that isn't that great for us, because our bishop no longer defends our king. It's very interesting. I think it's the logical move though, it's the principal move. And with very low time, I think it's what I'm going to play. e6. Pawn takes, bishop takes. And crucially, bishop to f7 isn't a move because we can take with the queen because the bishop is pinning the rook to the king. He goes back. Okay. Wow, okay. Okay. If we take, then we're just threatening to promote. Take c4, promote. That looks winning. Cuz c4 is only dangerous if we're worried about losing this bishop. Okay, now we can offer a queen trade. I think this should be good. We're up a piece now. And as long as we can stop this attack in the next couple moves, we're good. Queen moves, okay. That doesn't look great, though. What about this? C4 then. Mm, don't like it. What about this? Give him a check. I want to go for G5, C4... And then try and trade queens. Because if we give our bishop up, we're still up a fair few pawns. Let's do it. Let's do it. If we can give the bishop up to win another pawn and trade queens, we're just up three pawns. That's easy to convert. You are just threatening to take c5 too. Okay, that seems like desperation. We can just move the rook. Sorry, I haven't been explaining quite as well because um, I've got pretty low time. So I'm just trying to be as accurate as possible in as little time as possible, which requires to be a, me to be a bit quieter when I'm...
calculating. You could go rook c8 to defend c5. And then what are we going to do? The c4 is again on the cards. What? Okay. That's a free rook. I thought rook to c8 was far more resilient there. Just defending the c5 pawn, but that's a pretty solid game. I think I'm pretty happy with that. Let's get into the game analysis. All right, so the game review gives me 91.7% accuracy and my opponent 79.6. So for, I don't know, like the fourth game in a row or something, incredibly high accuracy scores. And the game didn't last that long, in fairness. It was 33 moves. So we didn't go into some end game or anything where the engine would be criticizing every single move because it can see like 40 moves into the future. But I think more than anything, it kind of just demonstrates how easy the Vienna is to play. If I can get an accuracy score like that, which, I mean, I would assume that would be more what you're expecting from a 23-2400 rated player, like 92% accuracy. So anyway, e4, e5, knight c3. My f6, the Vienna game, with f4 being the Vienna gambit. We have d6. d6 is not the main move. The main moves are, well, the main move is d5, and I won't actually go massively into this, because if you just check the previous episode, so episode 21, then I go far more into detail on these lines, and what black's options are after takes takes. So if you want to learn about the Vienna Gambit, check the previous video, it'll be in the playlist down below somewhere. He goes for d6, and you can't take. If you take, you can see the computer gives minus like 0.5 to 0.8 for black. And the problem is that white's development is just far worse than black's. You know, like knight f3, bishop c5, white now can't castle. You try and play like bishop c4, castle, d3. I mean, black can even just go like knight c6. His development is so easy. And one of the big problems is that you can't castle your king because of this bishop, right? Because moving the f-pawn is risky because it opens your king up. So you need to play the positions correctly. So we go knight f3, just putting further pressure on e5. Bishop g4 is a move. Of course, knight c6 could have been played to defend the pawn. Knight d7 could have been played to defend the pawn. He could have taken, in which case we would have gone d4 to open up an attack on the pawn. A move like knight h5. I have been seeing this more often, playing in far more of a king's gambit style. But what I actually learned recently is that knight d5 here is a very, very good move because it's very difficult to defend the f4 pawn for black now. If you try and play g5, then knight takes g5. And the problem is that this knight is under attack, the pawn is under attack. And c7 is under attack. So if queen takes g5, then... Oh, you're not even taking c7. You're taking the knight. I knew knight d5 was the move. But yeah, you sack the queen and you win the queen back. And you're up a piece. No, you're not up a piece. You're up a ton of pawns. And this pawn's about to fall. So you're at one pawn. But your position's dominant. So this should be pretty easy to clean up for the white pieces. Anyway, he goes bishop g4, and I go bishop c4. So here, here, I wanted to check. Yeah, bishop c4, knight takes e4, and I thought this didn't work for black. Apparently, you can take here first, and after king takes, then knight takes e4. And this doesn't work because you take on e5 with check. So... It's equal material, but black's king is incredibly vulnerable. And you have some tactics on this bishop, potentially. King g8. Take. Take. Castle kingside? Yeah, and you're just good. Equal material, but how is black going to develop his rook? Easy position for white. e5 is vulnerable. 
you take this with the white pieces. So a line I also wanted to check was here, here, here. And bishop to b3 didn't work because you can take the knight. And after bishop takes f7, if king takes f7, then knight e5 check wins, wins to bishop. But he doesn't have to take. He can just go king e7 and then everything is under attack. And it's equal material currently. And white, if he retreats to bishop, you lose the knight. And you can't move the knight because then you lose the queen. And you can't take on e4. So that was the idea. And that's why I rejected bishop to b3. So what I was going to do potentially was this. And after d takes e4, knight takes e5. Here, here, I thought this was better for me. Maybe I would have found bishop takes f7 had he actually gone into the line, like immediately, um, like this. But it's always something you have to watch out for in these Vienna positions. Because when you play d3, you can always hit back with a pawn and then there's no tricks. But especially when the bishop comes out to g4, you always have to watch for bishop takes f7. Okay? Just a few you have to watch for. Anyway, he goes knight c6, which is the best move. Just defends the pawn, potentially going to play knight d4. I go d3, knight d4, and the computer always likes these positions for black. Every single time. I mean, unless black's down some kind of material. It prefers them for the black side. Now, I was considering f takes e5, but the problem is... After d takes e5, bishop f7, king f7, knight e5, king g8, knight g4, knight g4, queen g4, knight c2, king d2, knight to a1. This is mate. So the move is to come back to d4. And I mean, what's the material count? I'm up a pawn. My king's kind of weak though. His king's also kind of weak. Meh. Is there a better way for black to go about this? Okay, here you can go h5. Force the queen off of this diagonal so the queen can't go to e6. Queen goes back to d1 to defend c2. Queen h4, g3, queen h3. Now you can't castle. If bishop to e3, then queen g2. And if this, then knight takes e2. Very complicated line, though. Anyway, in a lot of these cases, if the knight is on d4 and c2 is vulnerable, then this whole trick doesn't actually work, which is why I played bishop e3. And I was like, look, it's up to you what you do now. I'm just going to throw the ball back in your court. I know this, this kind of structure very well. Likely you don't, because it's quite deep. We're on move 7. And I must have had this posi this kind of position at least 50 times. So I understand it better. Or I should anyway. Which is again why I like offbeat openings. So bishop takes f3 is the preferred move of the computer. And after we take back with the g-pawn, then the knight is kind of just quite good. Knight h5, apparently the move threatening queen h4. Fe5, d5, castle kingside? No way am I castling kingside. The thing is, most people just don't take on f3 with the bishop. Because I'm not forcing them to, so why would they? Better is also c6, but again, looks a bit weird. I kind of just... Bishop e3 is more so just asking him, bro, do you fancy moving the knight? Because you can double my pawns if you take. Now, let's imagine a couple moves get wasted. Let's just say a6, castle, a5, king h1. Now I really like knight takes f3. Because after gf3, bishop h3, I can go rook g1. And now I absolutely love these positions. Because I feel like I'm absolutely dominating. My queen might transfer to e1. And come out on the king side like this. 
my bishop's a monster, my knight might jump into d5, I could lock the pawn structure with f5, or I can take it at the right moment. I can go f5, f4 even. These are the positions that I really like to play, but I can't, I, I didn't have enough moves to get there. But my opponent chooses knight takes f3. I did mention I would look at bishop to e7, if black basically does nothing. And yes, you can take, take, and I assume put a knight on d5, and just have a lot of control over the center, which is definitely a way to play, a way to play. <laughs> so this was also a consideration. c5 as well, just supporting the knight. Apparently that falls to f takes c5, and if f takes, sorry, d takes c5, then you have this whole thing. And you can't take on c2 again because this is mate. So worth bearing in mind. But black does not have to take back. Black can take on f3. And after gf, de, rook g1, probably develop the queen castle queen side. White's better, probably because of the dominance over the d5 square. You can whack a knight there at any point. But it's not that easy. It's not that easy. Anyway, I've gone massively into depth over this. But I think it's important because if you play the Vienna Gambit, you're going to get positions like this a whole lot. Because a lot of people like to play moves like d6 and knight c6. They're trying to avoid like playing into the most critical lines that you're most likely to know the most about. So gf3, bishop h5. I was expecting bishop h3. Takes, takes, queen e2, we're going to castle. Yeah, it, it is pretty good. This bishop is kind of doing nothing, to be fair. But at least it can always retreat back this way. I felt like coming to h5 kind of stranded the bishop. But I guess it held on to f7, which was useful. Bishop h5, though. Queen e2. Queen d7. Rook g1. Castle. We take, take and bishop a7. I didn't play bishop a7 first because I thought we had this. And no doubt it's still better for us, but I'd rather be up a pawn than not up a pawn. You know? So we do it this way. Takes, takes, bishop a7, bishop b4, which makes the most sense because after we castle, he can ruin the structure and go queen to a4. Now what I intended to do was not castle and go bishop to e3. That's what I intended, which is better. Again, I just mixed my move order up in my head. And my point was, after bishop c3, bc3, and queen to a4, I can go bishop b3. And if queen a3, bishop c1. This isn't necessarily the way you would have to play, but I feel like it's a very easy way to play. Computer might be arguing just to keep the king in the center. Queen g2 it quite likes. And I suppose the point is, if the key, if the queen tries to infiltrate, you just go king to d2. And the king is actually very safe in the center of the board. Because these minor pieces can't do anything. It makes sense. It makes sense. But I didn't see the point in being risky. So we get this position. Queen a4. Bishop c5. I could have gone to e3. But I did not like queen to a3 check. Because after king to b1, queen c3. And why give him the pawn back unnecessarily, right? So this made more sense to me. Stopping queen to a3. And I expected b6, which is what he played. And now if I move the bishop, we have the same thing and he wins c3. So we attack the queen first. Queen is forced to move. The queen goes to a7. Now we drop the bishop back, because now if queen a3, king b1, our bishop blocks the queen's path to c3. So, queen a7, bishop drops back, bishop g6. Here the computer wants d4, which makes sense. I guess it also opens our queen up to a6, which could be quite useful. And these pieces are still locked out because of our pawn structure, but I missed this idea. I go king b2, which the computer also really likes. C5 made a lot of sense to me though, even though the computer doesn't like it, it 
poses some problems for us. Again, d4 is the move. We choose queen f2. Rook d6, f4. Now, what I was expecting after f4 was bishop h5 attacking my rook. Oh, I can just take on e5, though. And after this, we just take, take, take. Now, if I didn't take on e5, I was looking at rook d e1, knight g4, queen to h4, knight e3, and queen h5. And this knight has nowhere to go. It's basically trapped. You can take on f4. Queen e5 attacks everything. Rook f6, g7 hangs. This is what my plan was. Now, there is a good chance, however, if um, if you did play bishop h5, that I would have just noticed this was hanging. I don't know why I didn't in the calculation, but even through my move order, which was incorrect, it was still completely winning, right? If you can find, if you can find a line that you're completely winning in, even if it isn't the best line, then like, who cares if you don't find the best line? If you're completely winning, you're completely winning. So, so what? E f4, bishop f4, rook d7. Bishop e5 I liked. Computer does like a4, which I did consider to stop b5 from ever happening, but I thought I kind of was forcing this knight to move to h5, and then I could continue with moves like a4. But he didn't do that, he just played rook hd8, which I think was a very practical choice, by the way, to give the knight up, rook d6, queen goes back, and then try and push on the queen side. And c4 is a big threat. If I play like h4, c4, and I'm kind of screwed. See, queen g4 check, queen d7, takes, takes. And the bishop's trapped because I can't take here because my rook hangs. It's not great. This is probably drawn. h5 is apparently the only move. And if you take it, rook g8, king c7, rook h1, bishop g6, and then you can take on c4. No way I would have found that. Which is why I chose e5. Rook b1 is apparently better. Just get the rook off the file, tuck the king away, and just take if he goes c4. Okay, well e5 made sense to me though. Rook, and, and that was a strange move by the way. I was expecting the rook to swing over, but I guess it doesn't actually threaten anything, like I said. And, what, can I still go e6? Oh, no, here I can't. Um, what am I on about? But there is no actual threat anymore because I have so many defenders on c4 and there's no pin on my rook anymore. So I guess the point was to keep this pin alive. e6 is the best move. You can't take because bishop takes and the rook is pinned. And this isn't a move. Trying... Wait, why was I worried about this? Oh, something like this. I don't know. Queen g4 is still winning, but... The point is you can just take with the queen because the rook is pinned to the king. So e6, rook d6, we take on f7. And the problem is that we're going to promote. If he goes c4, we promote. If you take, then I can just take back. And if you take, then I take. And rook d8. I mean what? I'm up in exchange and his king is completely open. Rook a1 is coming. You're probably going to get mated here because this bishop is completely out of the game. And the king is so weak. Worst comes to worst, I trade everything. And it's rook and five pawns versus bishop and two, which is obviously a win. So he, 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 he took queen f7. I was expecting this. No, not that. This. Oh, but then bishop e6. I missed that. So that's why he didn't play that. Okay, queen b6 makes more sense now. I did consider the move rook to g7, but c4 was still kind of scary. Take? Take? You can't take because of mate? Okay, I mean, I didn't have enough time to calculate this anyway. 
So I just checked king b8, rook g5, threatening c5. And here I thought it was only a rook c8. Apparently bishop d5. The game goes on though. The game goes on. I thought that was more resilient. h6 isn't a bad move though, because you're trying to force the rook off of the diagonal. Sorry, the uh, row? Row? Uh, yeah, row. Rank, rank, not 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 row, rank. It's ranks and files. <laughs> I had a bit of a, a stroke there. Rook g8 is good though, because it forces a trade at rooks. Would I have seen that? Maybe not. Even if I play a move like rook g3, I'm still okay. But c4 is kind of scary, which is why I just went rook h5. Because my point was, if this is played, then I just take on b5. And after, well, no, actually, he can take the bishop there, there, there. And yes, I give the piece back, but it's rook and five, two rooks and five versus two rooks and one. This is completely winning, obviously. So this is what I was going for. And my point was that I've got very low time. So this is far easier to convert without queens on the board, even if I have to give a piece back. But he goes rook d5 and gives me a rook. And resigns and that's the game and we're over 1900 elo now we are 90 points off of our 2000 elo goal if you stuck around to the end of the video thank you very much for watching and i will see you in the next one